Hello everyone, this is Chris, and I am bringing you a bit of a bonus video this week. Uh, I was going to record some more gameplay, but I'm having trouble connecting to Octagon. And there's been some exciting news, so this is going to be a little bit more like a sort of podcasty thing than my usual fare. So, uh, first things first, going to be an announcement, which maybe you already know about, maybe you don't. And then we're going to follow it up with an actual live deck building. Uh, I'm going to talk you through the deck that I'm building, sort of how I make my choices, how I test and see whether or not I think the deck is even worth downloading and playing, you know, what sort of all the things that go into that. And then I'm going to wrap it up and try and get this posted tonight. So. You've probably been staring at this in the background since I started because it's been on the screen. Uh, but just this week, yesterday, in fact, um, a couple of members of the Cardboard of the Rings Discord announced a new sort of fan convention get together that they are hosting at the Fantasy Flight Event Center in Minnesota. I was really about to say Wisconsin, but my friend who's from Minnesota would hate me forever. Anyways, the four guys who are organizing this, Fishbaugh, Loophole, McDog3, and Peace and Thought, uh, they've reached out to a few people to try and, you know, get the word spread. Uh, as you can see from this page, the Kickstarter is already above its goal. Uh, but as I understand it, the plan is basically a big three-day Lord of the Rings extravaganza. Uh, there are some prizes. There are some swag opportunities. And there's like 40 spots left. So if you're watching this video and you somehow are not on the Cardboard of the Rings Discord, uh, you should check out the Kickstarter. Maybe you want to go. Maybe you want to contribute, see where things end up. Um, I haven't backed yet myself. I'm not sure if I'll be able to go, but I'm <laughs> looking into that right now. Gotta see if vacation times can line up. Oh uh, yeah, I encourage you to check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, and the description is gonna be down in the the description. The link is gonna be down in the description of this video, uh, or you can always find it on Kickstarter by searching Con of the Rings, which is exactly what I did. So with that out of the way. Let's click over to RingsDB with this lovely blank slate in front of us. I'm sure you've been here before. You have seen exactly this, this gigantic list of heroes and no idea what to do next. I have a small idea about the deck I want to build, but we're going to sort of go organically. Um, I don't know exactly which cards I want to have in it. I have one hero in mind. So let's, uh, let's see how it goes. So first things first, we're going to add the one hero that I absolutely want to get in this deck. Original Bilbo Baggins, nine threat. He's a hobbit. First player draws one additional card. Uh, the reason for this is that I've been doing a lot of Arwen deck builds, and I rarely discard anything that's not Elven Light. I usually end up replaying the Elven Light immediately. And I don't always tend to cycle more than one Elven Light in any given round. Which means that Arwen is basically Bilbo with two extra willpower. Except that I have to, like, I have to actually draw something to turn her into a card draw engine. Whereas with Bilbo, we get that right away. Um, and obviously his stats are kind of mediocre, right? He's short two willpower and one health in comparison to Arwen, but I think we can make up for that. Uh, and he is lore instead of spirit, which, you know, is... Eh, it's got pros and cons. So I'm going to start with Bilbo. It means my threat is a little bit high, and my willpower is a little low at the beginning of the game. And to sort of avoid the trap of, let's just put Arwen in the deck, uh, we're not going to do that think what I'm going to do instead, throw in Tactics Eowyn. Uh, this is going to give us sort of easy access to defenders. 
going to give us a big emergency button attack and a lot of willpower for the threat that we're paying. Plus, you know, we might be able to do some shenanigans to buff up Bilbo's defense. And I think I'm going to fall back to type. And we're going to add Theodrid as our third hero. Uh, puts our starting threat at, let me do some math. Yeah, 23. RingsDB still says 26, but we know that's a lie. Uh, 23 is pretty good. It's below just about every enemy in the game. Uh, with these three, we have access to a lot of different spheres. We can do a lot of different cool stuff. And I know I've done a lot of these things before. So see if we can turn this into something a little bit different than we might normally expect. Uh, obviously, the plan is going to have Eowyn and Theodred questing pretty much all the time. Going to give us extra resources of leadership and tactics. Uh, Bilbo is either going to quest or we're going to use him for defense. I think let's focus on defensive Bilbo first, and then we can sort of decide whether or not we want to round him out. All right, so Bilbo Baggins, he's a hobbit, he's lore. Burning Brand lets us cancel those shadow effects. Um, Bilbo's health is a little low, so we're gonna pull in Entdraunt. Yeah, let's, let's pull in all three of those. I think that could be pretty good. And if we're gonna lean into Ents, uh, Ent Moot, gonna help me draw some Ents. We have an Ent in order to play it, which is a bit of a downside relative to the Eagles are coming or the, what is it, the Rohan one that lets you search for something. Uh, but that's okay. It can find our Ent drop. It'll be able to find our Ent characters. And the Ents are really good. So stick with that. Uh, Burning Brand and Ent Drop, neither of them is restricted. Uh, if we are leaning hard on Ents, Steward of Gondor is going to help us pay for them on Bilbo. Uh, and I don't feel like I need Rod of the Steward this time because Bilbo obviously does not need help drawing cards. do think I'm going to add Gondorian Shield because that is a really easy way to buff up Bilbo's defense. And we can throw in some fast hitches to sort of enable him to defend multiple times around once we get all this going. Uh, let me Dunedine Warning. Is Warning the defense one? Yeah. Let's throw in some Dunedine Warnings for defense for right now. This is sort of a lot of attachments. <laughs> I mean, ideally, we're going to put one Burning Brand, three Dunedain Warnings, an Entdraught, two Fast Hitches, one Gondorian Shield, one Steward of Gondor on Bilbo. Uh, and now that we've gotten so high, I think I'm going to take the Entmoots out. Uh, they, they will help draw cards, absolutely true. But needing an Ent in play is possibly a bit bad. And Darren's runes, with so many copies of attachments that are sort of extra, we can definitely swing pretty easily. Um, normally I might do deep knowledge, but without spirit, I don't really have any way of reducing my threat. So let's put in three copies of Heed the Dream. And at this point, I think the bulk of what we need is allies. Uh, I am going to grab sneak attack. Ganondorf, good job, and Gandalf. Uh, you know, this is not a terribly exciting six cards to pick, but they do help get you out of a lot of jams that otherwise you might end up sort of stuck with. And now we need to decide what we're going to fill with. Uh, most of our resources are going to be lore, but Theodred is going to give us some extra tactics and leadership resources. So let's throw in a couple copies of Faramir. 
Uh, we're going to have a bunch of allies. That is really, really handy. Um, obviously, if we're going Ents, we need Treebeard. And if Bilbo's going to defend, Welling Hall Preservers will help us get questing. Wandering Ent, same deal. Uh, and both of these can actually fight quite well if we don't end up needing their willpower. All right, that is 39 cards. Okay, Ents, those are heroes. I don't care about heroes. Let's look at our allies. Quickbeam is great. We should put him in. Uh, skin bark, I don't care. Leaf lock, kind of a pain. Uh, Durndingle warrior, we're trying to get Bilbo to do that stuff. Um, but it's probably worth including some of these. I mean, booming ent, sort of sadly, feels like just a bad wandering ent. Like I know he's going to get some boosts, but we've got Welling Hall Preservers, we're going to be healing. Let me Durndingle Warrior. Pull in two Booming Ents. Uh, and at this point, I want to be able to heal Bilbo. So I'm going to bring in two copies of Eorith. I have two left, so before we go any further, let's jump over here to this lovely chart. Uh, it's going to tell us basically how much, re how many resources we're going to spend on all the different spheres, uh, how likely we are to see a card of which sphere. So tactics, we're rocking 13 resources if we play all these cards. Leadership is going to cost us 12, uh, and lore is going to cost us 31. Which is fine. The plan is definitely for lore resources to be used substantially more often than the others. Uh, I'm going to take an ent drop down because I think with all the defense boosts, we maybe don't need three of those in order to help us get one. And that leaves us three slots left. Uh... Let's see, what could be good here? I also got my stats. 34 willpower, 35 attack, 36 defense. All right, let me look at allies. Nick's spirit. Uh, we're going to sort them by willpower. See if I can add someone good. Hmm. This is definitely an interesting option. Grab a Furial. And make a lot of things much more expensive. Uh, Gimli is great on the leadership front. We want to bring in something tactics. I'm going to bring in something tactics. Maybe I'll grab Yazan. No, you know what? Let's do uh, Legolas, actually. Legolas can draw us cards. Nice something to work towards in tactics if we draw it. And that is 50 cards, half allies, half other stuff. Bilbo is a defender. And now we're going to decide whether or not we need to make changes. Uh, so first things first, what I always look at here is this whole page. Uh, card types is a little bit silly because I already know how many allies, how many attachments, how many events from over here. But just in case you needed to sort of visually compare them, that's all there. Uh, the three that are the most important are definitely these three down at the bottom for me. Uh, cost by sphere sort of dictates where you want the resources to go in your deck. Um, and with Theodrid, this is sort of super important. With Steward of Gondor, it is even more important because we're going to have a lot of resources piling up on one character, uh, which means that we want our resource distribution to match, essentially. Or we want to be able to have enough neutral costs to sort of offset whatever resource expenditure we're getting in the sort of expensive sphere versus the cheap spheres 
And looking at this, I feel pretty happy. Uh, you want to play all the uniques one time in leadership or tactics. That is 17 resources, which is definitely more than we're likely to get. Tend to plan solo for every quest to last about 10 rounds, uh, which ideally means that we'll be able to spend 15 or so resources off of Ao and Entheodred each. So we're a little over, which is fine, because we're probably not going to draw all the cards in our deck anyways. Uh, and in lore, we're looking at 35. Which, again, is a little bit over this sort of 10-round expenditure. Um, sort of got... Well, Phil's going to get one the first round, and then... If we're lucky, and we have Steward of Gondor for him in round two, uh, he's going to generate three every round after that, so 28 total. This is not a bad amount over, I think. Uh, especially since we have sort of Eorith, which will possibly help us absorb extras. Uh, we can shift Theodred resources to Bilbo once we get Fast Hitch, especially if we have sort of enemies under control. And Treebeard actually can help us offset some of the resource costs of our Ents. Uh, he can pay for, what, six, eight, 13 different allies? Uh, can he pay for Entrot? He can pay for Entrot. Okay, so he can pay for about 15 cards out of the deck, which is pretty good. And we have some neutrals, a Treebeard and Gandalf, which are going to end up coming from other things. Like, I think, I think our resource balance is okay. Uh, down here, because we're playing Ents, we have a lot of stats. <laughs> Dump all the allies on the table somehow, and you end up with 67 health and a little over 40 of each of the other stats. Obviously, you can't use 40 of each of the stats, but they're there. Uh, and we're going to probably have a bunch of allies, which means that Faramir is going to give us even more willpower. So, all told, great news on that front. Uh, health is great, because we're sort of relying on Welling Hall Preserver and Eorith to heal up everyone. Uh, we have a lot of extras that we can absorb sort of archery damage and stuff with. And the curve is always interesting. Uh, as you can see, we've got 32, 37 cards that cost two resources or less. Uh, bump that up to three, and it's 40 out of 50. Uh, with the Theodred resource, that means just about every card in the deck is playable turn two on any hero. Uh, obviously, there are some exceptions, right? Gondorian Shield, we can only play once we have... Actually, I guess we can play it before Steward of Gondor. It's just not as effective, so that's good. Um, you know, our big expensive allies, we obviously can't play turn two, but we could easily play them turn three. Uh, except for Furial, who we could play turn two if we have a Steward of Gondor. So, like our, our ability to get out any card we want at the beginning of the game is quite high. First turn, six willpower is possibly a challenge. Uh, as you can imagine, most of these allies come in exhausted because they're Ents, so it's a little bit slower. And our five cost cards, Furial and Gandalf. Four cost cards, like these are all nice to haves, not sort of essential to making the deck work. I'm, I'm okay with that, actually, as a sort of bare bones first pass, are we completely screwed deck check. Which is when we come over here to this second tab and we do some test hands. I do this every time I make a deck, uh, just for fun or for a video. No matter what it is, I always come over here, take a seat, draw some test hands. Uh, this test hand is atrocious. 
You can't play basically any of these cards right away. I would ship it back immediately. Oh, this hand is substantially better. I'll be able to have Burning Brand and two defense boosts on Bilbo in round two, at the very least. I will be able to play a Durndingle Warrior who can help us defend. Uh, these are not as good now that I think about it because we have Bilbo set up to defend, but like, like I like this hand for now. So, draw our two cards from Bilbo, see where we end up. Uh, this is not a big help, but I can do Darren's Runes, and at this point I will discard a Durndingle Warrior and not worry about it at all. So, round one, you play Dunedain Warning, uh, and you quest with everyone, put a resource on Bilbo, you don't have to put a resource on Bilbo or quest with him if you don't want to, but it'll get us more resources for Ents a little faster. So then we move on to round two, we draw two more cards. Later has one resource, A1 has two, Bilbo has three. Uh, so we can play Burning Brand, Dune Giant Warning. Now Bilbo is four defense, cancel shadow effects. I uh, can't play this Dern Dingle Warrior. It's not great, but we can. Uh, and now Bilbo has one resource. Nobody else has any. You draw two more. You can load him up even further. Possibly play a Wandering Ent. Like that's, that seems solid. All right, let's do another hand. Uh, this one I like too. Uh, so let's keep it and see where we end up. Draw two cards for turn one. There's a steward like that. Uh, so we're going to Darren's Runes, draw two, discard a steward. Darren's Runes, draw two. Uh, discard Durndingle Warrior. We can funnel Eowyn's resources into Treebeard after we play the Gondorian Shield. That is pretty solid. Uh, for our turn one plays, we just do Gondorian Shield on Bilbo. And we're going to save the rest of the resources. Uh, quest with at least A1 and Theodrin. Uh, put the resource on... I mean, you'd like it on Bilbo, but it might be worth keeping him to defend round one, just in case. A 23 threat is not that big a deal, so put it on Bilbo. Move to round two. We've got three resources on Bilbo, one on Eowyn, two on Theodrid. Means we... <laughs> Steward of Gondor on Bilbo, which shoots him up to five resources. Dump in Burning Brand and Quick Beam. He's got one left. Uh, Eowyn has one that's doing nothing. Theodred has none. I don't even know if I drew the two cards for that turn, which might have made a difference, but okay, so that's, that's a good start. One more time. Uh, this hand is bad. We ship it back. This hand is interesting. And since we mulligan the last one, we got to keep it. Test draw two. Uh, we have Heed the Dream, Darren's Runes, two warnings. This is a very, very leadership heavy hand, but I think I'm okay with that. Uh, so first things first, turn one, you get a Darren's Runes, draw two cards, discard a Faramir. Um, and then you want to... Dump a shield on Bilbo. Send everyone to the quest to give Bilbo an extra resource. Allows you to play Heed the Dream. Shows you top five cards, lets you pull out this Steward of Gondor. Uh, and it's hard to get from here back to a sort of meaningful state because, you know, you just looked at the top five and shuffled them back. But you can see how from here we've got Steward of Gondor, we've got more defense boosts. We have Faramir that we can build to and Treebeard that we're going to get on the table as soon as we can. So I think that's a solid start. Starting with this, I'm okay with that. Draw our two. There's Darren's runes. Uh, of all of these, I think Entrot is the weakest. It's a challenge, though. Uh, okay, so turn one, fast hitch, Studio 9 warning. 
So Bilbo is going to be able to quest if we decide we want an extra resource on him, and he'll be able to defend at three defense. Uh, can't do anything with Eowyn's resource. We'll put Eorth into play. Uh, commit characters to the quest and put the resource on Theodrid. See if we need to sneak attack. Um, just to be safe, right? We can drop in Gandalf to kill an enemy before it engages or defend against an attack that might kill Bilbo or swing back after Bilbo takes an attack on his own. Because uh, at that point, what you're really hoping for is to draw two more cards and find Steward of Gondor, but we didn't. Even at this point, you can Booming Ent, you can play another Dune or Die in Warning, you still have Sneak Attack available. Uh, Bilbo would have one resource, which means short from playing the Wandering Ent, but at one resource on him, we could save for Treebeard the following round, we could Sneak Attack to draw more cards. Yeah, I am actually pretty okay with this. Uh, so I think, given all that testing, I sort of see how I go through this process of basically just goldfishing hands in order to make sure I'm not going to be stuck too often when I go to record a video. And even if I get a bit of a not obvious hand, I have a little bit more experience sort of thinking out what we're going to do, how we're going to progress from the baseline. And I think this deck did okay. Uh, the things I want to get rid of are these Durndingle Warriors. Because if Bilbo's our defender, they are way too slow. And I think what I'm going to do to replace them, drop in three Envoy of Pillar Gears. Uh, their stats are bad. This is definitely true. But they only cost a net of one resource, and they allow us to redistribute a little bit, which is going to help us shift resources from the characters that have too many to some of the characters that need more. Uh, and we could use Errand Riders to do the same thing, but I don't think we're going to need to do it enough for us to need Errand Riders to be able to shuttle resources around constantly. Uh, and conveniently, right, Aowen is a noble. Theodred is a noble, and Bilbo is going to get Steward of Gondor so that he has the Gondor trait, which means that all our heroes are viable for this. And with that change, I think we're going to call it a day. Name my deck so that when I download it on Octagon, later it's not just new LOTR deck parentheses 10. And that is where we got to. Uh, you see that swap cost us some defense and some health, but we still have a lot of stats in general. Actually, it didn't cost us any willpower or attack because Durndingle Warrior was not really a heavy hitter in either respect. So, like I said, I can't jump into Octagon right now in order to test this deck, but I am planning on doing it over the weekend, probably recording a playthrough, which I will annotate and share and do all of those things with as normal. Uh, once again, in case you didn't hear about it before, I really encourage you to check out the Con of the Rings Kickstarter. Uh, these four guys are definitely great members of the Lord of the Rings community, and I think the event that they're planning is probably going to be fantastic. It may not be absolutely massive, like Gen Con or some of the other events that you might be going to, but that's all right. I encourage you to at least consider supporting them. And check back in with me next week when I probably play this deck, and it may or may not go horribly wrong. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.